channel is going to be about inspiration and why these guys do what it is that they do, that they do so well. First up, Jared James Nichols. Let's give it up for Dave Rude. Next up, Chris Trainer. Jason Hook of Five Finger Death Punch. Brendan Small. And one of the most iconic men in rock and roll music. Give it up for Bob Rock. My first question is, before you guys were even guitar players, what was the song, the riff, the performance that made you want to pick up the guitar? and come down the rabbit hole oh so deeply. It was easy for me, it was uh, If I leave here tomorrow, Freebird, right? It was Freebird, that was the solo, I heard that, and I was like, what is that? I wanna do that. That was the solo for me. My favorite period was the 80s, I'm sorry, I love the 80s. So I was, you know, dieting on uh, Van Halen, and I loved Kiss, so. Let's see if I can whip this out. It's still a little early for me. That's all I got. Jimmy Page, you know, with the dragon pants and the double neck guitars. And uh, I, I always wanted the Les Paul because of him. Everything that he ever did is great and just contributes to uh, rock and roll. Anything he did was uh, way cooler than anything anybody else has ever did. <laughs> uh, you know, one of the songs that got me really into like hard rock and guitar as being just a fucking guitar player is uh, uh, Mr. Brownstone. That is just about one of the coolest riffs I think ever been written by anybody. <laughs> For some reason, I heard that song by Prince. Uh, I would never want to take the place of your man. Do you guys know that song? It's a. Uh... One that uh, I was in a band up in Canada, and we had a great producer. His name was uh, Mick Ronson, the boy guitar player, and he's probably the biggest influence on my production. That is an amazing guitar player. What was the song that you could not wait to master? I don't know it. They still dig you though. Anyway. Still Zap, probably Ramble On, um, which actually I just did a recording with Bob a couple months ago and I said I started playing Ramble On and he told me I was playing it wrong and as usual he was right and I had to go back and listen to it so I think it's something like a... today kind of pick up on that, like what's special about that generation of music, what's special about Sabbath, what's special about Zeppelin, is that those dudes were playing the whole way through. And so uh, that inspired me as a kid, and I think it still inspires kids today. Yeah, the first thing I thought of was, uh, I remember being like 12, and I had the, the vinyl of, of um, Blizzard of Oz, and like slowing it down after school one day to learn the, the crazy train riff, because uh, I had to do it before my mom got home, because she thought Ozzy was like gonna turn me into a criminal or something, so I had to hide the records, and, and I brought it out and, and, uh, and just figured out that riff, like slowed it down and go, uh, maybe it should be done right. It's just like another one of those riffs that it's, you know, has a, has a better one been written yet, I don't know, but it's pretty cool. I'm going to say the exact same thing, because that's such an important riff to guitar players. Uh, Crazy Train is one of the coolest things for me. So that, and... So, I mean, that, I couldn't believe that was a guitar. I thought that was, I thought that was just magical. I thought it was the coolest thing. So, I'm watching it already, but... But uh, that was one of the coolest things. And then also as a guy who likes heavy metal. So 
wasted years also is another thing. So those things, you got your right hand moving, uh, and uh, and there was all kinds of craziness in, involved in playing Sweet Child of Mine. You had to string skip, you had to do all this kind of articulation, and then like worry about your pick attack, and and then not letting like, the strings ring out and all that stuff. So those three, I knew they got a lot of rotation in my bedroom. My bedroom was a very lonely place back in those days. I was a I would not know the love of a woman for years <laughs> until I got my playing together. I knew, I knew deep down inside that I could get my fingers, my, my fat, sluggish fingers working, and then I could parlay this into romance. <laughs> you learned stairway, and then it all changed. And I learned stairway. <laughs> That's my answer. When I started playing guitar, it seemed everybody was better than me. So, uh, kind of like on the stage here. Uh, so I decided that, what, who did I like? Who, who was the person that kind of was the, the guy that I could find something that would inspire me? And it was Pete Townsend. And one of the, well, I guess from Pinball, Pinball Wizards, I can see from Miles, my generation, my generation actually. How simple is that? So it's just a guitar. It's about the song, and he, I always thought that, you know, he kind of, his leads were always served the song. So I, I concentrated on rhythm and songwriting, and that's where I ended up being as a musician. And the, the interesting thing is like, talking about Gibson, I mean, he played Gibson, so he played a lot of different guitars, but uh, Live It Needs is an SG standard. And it always goes back to Gibson for me, for that kind of sound. And his sound was not distorted, it was kind of clean, but it was always the way he hit it, like, kind of like Malcolm, the way he played, right? Was hitting your guitar, and that's what inspired me. Just to be a great rhythm player, a great songwriter, and to make great records. So that's my record. So what inspired me? All right, guys, well, that's gonna conclude our panel. Yeah, man, give it up for these guys up here. I wanted to thank all you guys on the panel for taking the time and talking to all of us and once again make me feel like the luckiest guy in the room. Everybody give it up for the panel. Give it up for the panel.